Scott, Scott gives it off. Scott. Whatever he does. <laughs> uh, but uh, this fear we're going to talk about more today. It, there's, there's, there's a fear that is a good fear. And it's when we're in the presence of God. And the fear of... Uh, See, I got to have my body, man, or I'm lost. Uh, but th th there is a good fear, and, 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 and I'm going to talk more about that later. Amen? All right. You guys are always picking on me. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Pastor Scott. <laughs> Excuses. There we go. Is it working now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, so good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, I have to admit, I was starting to worry a little bit after Pastor Critter had said about his dream last night about only a few people, 10 people being here or so. Kind of started off a little slow filling up this morning, and I was thinking, oh my gosh, dear God, don't let his dream come through. And luckily, we've got a few more people that kind of wandered in, so that was a blessing. Um, We're two more gathered, brother. There you go. Um, that, that's take a look in your in your uh, handouts. You'll see a uh, list of uh, things that the women are collecting for their uh, women's blessing bags. Uh, you can read down through it, just some things they need. Uh, there'll be a box out in the north X uh, to put your stuff in as you bring it and downstairs if you happen to come on a Tuesday night. Uh, also, we are uh, having an Easter egg hunt on Saturday, April 20th at 3 p.m. Uh, and we're just asking for donations of uh, Easter candy to have to give out to the kids. Just, you know, buy, a, buy get a, grab a bag of something you see on sale somewhere and just bring it in with you next Sunday or Tuesday night even. Um, the other thing is, and I know it seems like sometimes we talk about this over and over again, but it's just because we rely on it so much. We are an outreach ministry. We rely on your donations to help support us to be able to do the things we do. And to everybody that might be watching at home, uh, that goes for you too. Uh, you can, you, our address is on there. You can stick a check in an envelope, mail it to us, uh, but it doesn't come, it's not inexpensive to do some of the things that we do, uh, but we still do them because we know that one way or another, God will provide for us because he, he is alive and well here, uh, but we just need uh, your support too to help out. And even if you don't, you know, if you're a little financially strapped or something, don't worry about that. But be what you've heard Pastor Critter, myself, Jeff, Ryan talk about over and over again sometimes, it seems like, and that's being part of the body of Christ. And being part of the body of Christ just means that you need to help support us uh, financially, uh, as far as coming in and helping out whatever may need to be done. That's part of being the body of Christ. And, and that's what we're striving to get everybody to really feel and realize in their hearts what it means to be part of the body of Christ. Um, the other thing I'll just mention, coming up on uh, Saturday, April 27th at uh, 6.30, <coughs> excuse me, st and starting at 7, we've got a concert uh, with B-List Boys, Whitey Casey, and Safe Kept. Bring, yeah, bring, no, bring several friends. Uh, and, you know, let them know that, you know, they think it's just going to be some dull, boring church, you know, church get-together or something. It ain't. It is a concert. Uh, and then also that following Tuesday, the 30th, uh, Bread for War will be here. Uh, I believe they're doing a short couple songs or so, but then uh, they'll be uh, answering questions about their ministry. Uh, and, of course, Tuesday night's a meal night, uh, so we'll be having a meal after that as well. Uh, 
Uh, you may have remembered uh, Tuesday night at the service, if you happen to be here, that we mentioned that uh, Tammy Mathis' brother and his girlfriend had been in a uh, motorcycle accident uh, that Monday. Uh, but just to let you, everybody know, I talked to her yesterday, and they are doing much better. Uh, matter of fact, her brother Jimmy was released from the hospital, uh, so she was, she was happy about that and thanked everybody for their prayers. Um, that is really, I believe, everything that I have, except that as we get ready to, to go into prayer, I've got to say something about and ask you to remember this week in your prayers uh, all of our Islamic brothers and sisters that lost their lives this past weekend in New Zealand. Uh, New Zealand is the safest country in the world, they say, and yet there were 50 people killed once again while going into their house of worship. And we know that it's happened many, many times here in our country, in our churches of different denominations. It's just something I feel like we need to remember to keep in prayer uh, for all those families that were just lost. Like I said, the uh, last count I heard this morning was up, it's up to 50 now. Uh, which makes it one of the biggest uh, religious terrorist-related incidents. Uh, so just let's just remember them in our prayers. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together, for this opportunity to come into your house here to worship you and praise you. Father, we just ask that your Holy Spirit would run wild this morning, that everyone who's here and watching at home might feel your power and your grace, and might come to have a closer relationship to you. Dear Father, we just ask that you would be with all those who are here due to illness or sickness, and those that even couldn't maybe just get out of bed this morning, Father. Just be with them and touch their hearts and let them know that you are with them still, and that all they need to do is ask, ask you, and it will be given unto them. Dear Father, we just ask that you'd be with Pastor Critter, as he prepares to give the message this morning, just let your Holy Spirit flow out through him, Father, that he may speak your words, that it might be words of comfort and love, and they might touch the hearts of all who hear them. Dear Father, we thank you for all thy blessings in, your, in our lives, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And then, uh, just uh, knowing what Pastor Critter's message was going to be, I thought about, I started down through to try and find an a opening scripture to kind of go with it, and then I gave up because there's so many, and I just kind of said, God, just show me one. So this morning when I got here, he did finally, um, Psalm 2, chapter, or Psalm, Psalms 2, verse 11, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling, with trembling. And so saith the Lord. Amen. Rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Amen? Let me pull this over here. All right, so, as God was talking about fear, it's funny. When I, uh, when God told me, hey, hey Pastor, you're going to preach about fear. Cool, that's an easy one. You know, because what I'm noticing lately is that uh, when I was growing up, you know, hearing that word, God fearing man. You know, that meant something. And that's what we're going to talk about today is uh, what does it mean to fear God? That's a good question. Because when uh, I started uh, researching, I thought this was going to be no sweat. But then after I started checking scriptures, there's over 300 scriptures that talks about fear. And what's funny is, as you read these, 
they kind of contradict each other. So then I started really scratching my head. And it's funny how God works because, because I am a God-fearing man because I want to do God's will. That's what my fear is, that I'm under God's will. <clears throat> but, uh, but we make it less important. We get so caught up in what we need and what we want that we lose track of what, as Christians, what our life is. When we died of ourselves, we become God's servant. Our job then is to serve God. How do we do that? As you hear me say all the time, through his word, through the Holy Spirit. We must have the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost who guides and directs our efforts. And we lose track of that because we get caught up in fear. The bad fear comes about, well, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to do this? It's fear of the flesh. Does that make sense? So we get caught up in that fear, and we lose track of the fear of God. The word fear becomes even more mysterious in the Bible when we read scriptures like 1 John 4, uh, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So we know fear, the fleshly fear I call it, as fearing torment or hate or you know, uh, somebody hurting us, which we'll get more into. But then, and then it also says, been made perfect in love. We lo 19 says we love him because he first loved us. So it's telling us that we don't have to worry about fear because we got God and he's in our life and he's protecting and guiding us. But what we forget is he's got to be in our life. We can't be serving the flesh, standing in the darkness and expect God's love to be in our presence. Does that make sense? So you've got to be in God's presence in order for God to be, his love to be shining on you and in you. But then we read scriptures that tell us just the opposite. Matthew 10, 28. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is Able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now who's that? God. Sounds kind of double-minded, don't it? Isn't that confusing? One minute you're hearing in the Bible that, uh, you know, love, uh, don't fear, love God. And then next you're hearing, you better fear God. Because the one is totally opposite from the other as far as the meaning. And I'm going to explain that. <clears throat> How can fear of God, well, my bad. So let's go to the different definitions of fear. The fear definition in the flesh, the dictionary reference of fear, and unpleasing emotion caused by belief that someone or something is dangerous likely to cause pain or tr uh, threat. So when we, that was exactly what I was saying. When you think somebody's going to hurt you, you're feared, you're scared. You think some, you, you ain't going to be able to pay a bill, you're, you're, you're feared. But what are we doing when we do that? We're not relying on God, are we? We're, relying, we're, we're, we're in our flesh. That's a fleshly fear. Now let, let's uh, look at the uh, fear, meaning the godly fear. It says, God-fearing, which is what I've heard my whole life. That's a God-fearing man or a God-fearing woman. God-fearing, a religious person, law-abiding people, having or showing belief and faithfulness in their religion, their God. Now, the difference is, one is we're having faith in the world. When we fear, which the Bible says we're not supposed to do, it can be a sin if we fear things that we know that God can control for us. When it comes to a bill, uh, Dusty got a bill he can't pay. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, the only thing you can do is turn it over to God. Because when you fear that and you stay with that fear, then that's a simple fear. Amen? That's a, that's a fleshly fear is what I call it. Scripture is full of examples 
of how fearing God is a good and positive thing rather than a negative. For example, in Genesis 4, 42, 18, Joseph wins his brother's trust when he declares he is a God-fearing man. It was because the midwives feared God that they obeyed him instead of obeying the authorities by sparing the Hebrew children. Children, I'm sorry. So, does anybody know these stories? Today we're not going to get quite into them, but if you don't understand, check these scriptures out and read them, okay? They will help you. Exodus 117, but the midwives feared God and did not, did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the male children. Now in that time, they, was going to, they wanted to kill off all the male children because they were seeking for the... Amen? You know what I'm talking about? Okay, I don't, I, want, I don't want to spend my time on that today. Okay, even, even Pharaoh brought disaster on his nation because he did not fear God. Exodus uh, 9, 29, 31. So Moses said to him, As soon as I have going out of the city, I will spread out my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease, and there will be no more hell, that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. He had no fear of the Lord, and the, the, it was disastrous and people got diseases and all kinds of things was going on. But then he says, now the flax and the barley were struck for barley was in the heat, uh, uh, in the head and the flax was in the bud. Now this is how they feed themselves. So it's going to be destroyed. But he still did not fear God. Even though God had put this on him, he still had no fear. Moses chose leader to him on the, the basis that they feared God and wouldn't take bribes. So when he was just like I, when I, uh, when the Lord led me to Scott and to Jeff and to, to Ryan and the people that driving our buses and cooking our food, uh, I go to God and, and when he gives me these people, I'm relying on the fact that they will serve God with all their heart, that they have fear of being in God's presence. When you guys are serving food down there, you know, if people see you looking bad, then that makes God look bad. So, we, and if you're truly saved by the blood, you don't want to see that. You don't want to, if, if, if Dusty's out there driving the, the bus and he, somebody pulls out from him, he starts cussing him out stuff, is that God? No. So Dusty has that fear that he wants to be in God's presence, so these people come and will see God. That's a God fear that, we're talking about that's a God-fearing man a God-fearing woman that they fear that they, they're not in God's presence that they know because they have the Holy Ghost on them that they want to stay in God's presence amen are you with me church I know I'm going Old Testament on you today and I'm not normally do that a lot but 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 we'll continue okay the next moreover you shall select from all people able men that fear God Men of truth, hating controversies, and place such men over them to rule, to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifty, and rulers of ten. What's he say again? Moreover, you shall select from all the people able men that fear God. Meaning that they're, they're, they don't want anything going on in their life that brings anything against God. When you anger, are you in God's presence? No. When you, when you, when you uh, lie, are you in God's presence? No. How can anybody trust your word about God if you're a liar? And that's exactly what he's talking about. When I pick people from the Lord, well, the Lord picks them. He just tells me who. Uh, it's funny because I watch people come in this church and I'm going, my Lord, I don't think they're where you want them to be. You know, you let me deal with this. And I've watched them when, when the Lord says, tells me, hey, Dusty, I, 
the Lord's told me that you're supposed to drive a bus. But you, you know, you have to, we had a little lecture with him, you know, you're shining for Jesus. And to see that transformation in him, it, it was like his dedication to the Lord completely changed. That fear of God come in him because now he knew that I'm shining for Jesus. The way people see me is the way they see the Lord. That's the fear we're talking about, guys. Having fear that we're not in God's presence. Having fear that we're not being pleasing to God. Because in the bottom line is, we're put here to do what? Serve God. To love our brother, love our neighbor. Amen? Are you following me? And Moses told the Hebrews that God met with them in the terrifying display of his power so that they wouldn't sin. So when God was letting all these things happen to the Hebrews, why? Because he was letting them know, look, I do. God does have the power to cast you down, and we're going to read scripture about that. God does have the power. You know, the thing I feared the most was hell. God has the power to put stuff on you, but God don't want to do that. He wants you to be in his presence. God wants you to be in his presence. God wants to use you. He created you. As you've heard me say many times, before you was born, he, he already created a ministry for you. But it's up to you. I mean, we'll go back to Adam and Eve. Free will. Amen? You have a choice. It's up to you whether you choose it. And if you don't have that fear of God, knowing that God is almighty, then there's a problem. And we'll go to Exodus 20:20. 20, 20. And Moses said to the people, do not fear. For God has come to test you, and that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. So he was letting them know this is happening because God wants you to be, be concerned of what he can do. That if you're, you're, he saved you. You are the chosen. And, but he did that for a reason, because he knew in the future what they would be used for. Amen? The 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 most most mosaic I can't, I, the law uh, the mosaic law cites fear God as a reason to treat the disabled and the uh, and the, the elderly when they did this uh, uh, to do good so what they wanted to do it's kind of they it almost sounds like they tried to make a deal I want you guys to read some of these scriptures too go back. Uh, to the Mosaic and, and, and Leviticus and look these scriptures up and kind of read, do some research on them so you'll understand a little bit more what I'm talking about. Uh, and the Mosaic law cites fear of God as a reason to treat the disabled and elderly to, be, to do good, to do good on them. Okay, Leviticus 19.14. You shall not curse the dead nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shall fear your God. I am the Lord. And this is just not an Old Testament fear. It's not just in the Old Testament. Jesus even talks about that fear of God, how important it is to have that fear. We have to know that God is God. And we have to know that God can do things to us. And if we're not in his will, he'll let it happen. You know, God don't do anything bad. He don't have to. The flesh in the world does that for him. Satan's people. People in the darkness. God don't have to put evil on you. It's there. It's already here. It's been here since the beginning of time. But we need to fear that if we're not in God's presence, then we're open, we're open game. Just like a deer. You know, when come deer season, them deer, know, they just know. They have that fear of man because they just feel it in the air. They smell the shotgun powder, I guess. But that's what we should be fearing. And that's what God's talking about because there is a chance. If we're not standing in God's likeness, well, there's, it, it's, it's going to happen. If you're not doing God's will, bad can come on you. And even if you're doing God's will, bad can come on you. But we know we're in the presence of God so we don't have to Fear the flesh. See the difference in the fear? Fear that we're not in God's presence so he'll protect us and his will is being done. That's what's important. God will let things happen just like he did with Job. 
but he let them happen for a purpose so his will could be done. In order for everything to happen to lead up to Jesus in the Old Testament, all this stuff had to happen. Amen? Are you still with me, church? Jesus stayed strong, stronger than anyone when he says, don't be afraid of those who want to kill you, kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both body and soul to hell. The same scripture read in the beginning. Only God, Matthew 10, 28. God can do away with you. God is the almighty. Satan can kill you. But if you're under the authority of Christ, he can't kill your soul. Amen? He can make you miserable your whole life. At least try. But if you're under the authority of God and you're believing in the word, word of God, you're fearing God that if I don't stay learning this word, if I don't stay in the presence of God, then I'm allowing the enemy to make me miserable and I'll have a miserable life. And then if I'm not in the presence of God, then I'm probably going to hell, so I'm not going to ha have my pain and suffering going anyways. So see what I mean? This, this is a totally different fear. It's a good fear because fearing the, that God can stand back and say, there you go, you got a choice. Fearing that can be good because it makes us what? Stay in check. I know for me growing up, I had a stepfather that I feared. <laughs> and let me tell you, when I knew I did, sometimes, you know, we, we get off track. We get to playing where we shouldn't be playing. We get to having excuses why we don't go to church or why we're not doing this, why we're not studying, why we're not praying. And then we get kind of off. Next thing you know, we're not fearing God anymore. We're not having that fear. Hey, I'm not in God's presence. Hey, I can't even hear the Holy Spirit right now because I'm off in my flesh. Same thing as a kid. I'd get out with my buddies. Next thing you know, we're smoking weed and drinking beer. I don't have no fear of my dad. But let me tell you, when it's time to go home that night, and I'm all buzzed up, boy, I remember going, oh, Lord. Boy, I was seeking God in for answers then. Oh, Lord, because I never felt. My dad would turn around in that chair, that chair of his, and you knew it was on. Where you been, boy? Same fear. We must stay in the presence of God. It's a good fear to be in the presence of God because it keeps you from sinning. It keeps you from, how many of you have done something in front of somebody as a Christian? Uh, you know, cussed. Or, and then, you know, you know they, later on you're like, man, here I am talking about God. And then, then I act like that. Well, they're not going to believe in what I say. Do you have that fear, anybody? That's a God fear. That's a God fear of man and woman. Because you know, because the Holy Spirit's in you. When you're being convicted, of, man, I just messed up. I'm not supposed to be doing that. So you have that fear that you want to stay in God's presence. How do we do that? Right here. So we got to make sure that we have that fear. It's a good fear. It's that we, we don't fear God, because if we're in God's presence, then we don't have to worry about being destroyed. And that's what he was telling the Hebrews. You don't have to worry as long as you're in my presence. I allow these things to happen for a reason because you got off track, you got blinded. You, you got off track and you started worshiping other gods. And oh, he, he said, I had, to put my, I had to put my foot down. That's a good father. My stepfather let me go so long, and then he put his foot down. It was called a belt. Today, they don't know what that is. My dad had one that was a money belt, had a zipper in the back. And he started out with bending over and getting a couple wax. And then he'd get real upset because he knew he tried and tried and tried and tried to make me understand I wasn't getting it. And then he would lose his temper. Next thing you know, it would look like Zorro. And it was on. So I feared my dad because I knew if I wasn't in his presence, if I didn't fear my dad, because I didn't have God back then, if I didn't fear my dad, then, then, then I was getting lost. That's what a parent's supposed to do. And it's not... When, when we're on our kids' butt, we're, what, how many times you told your kids, you don't understand, I'm not trying to be mean, I love you. What do you mean you love me? You just beat the crap out of me. No, I had to do that because you're not getting it. You're not getting it. 
Well, that's the same with God. That's a God fear. Just like a daddy fear, father fear, mama fear. Of course, my mom was pretty dangerous with a belt, too. Well, switches and broom handles, whatever she could get her hand, racetracks. I remember as kids got, it was, uh, remember them Hot Wheel racetracks? Well, after the first time we got those, we didn't want any anymore. We never asked. My little brother, I remember the next year, after the first year, my little brother was like, I want a Hot Wheel race. No, 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 no. We don't want them in our house. <laughs> but that was a, a, a motherly fear. And, and, you know, even when mom would whack us, we get done. I love you. God. What do you mean you love us? She did love us. Enough that to, she had to hurt us. She didn't mean to hurt us, but she, she had to put that fear in us. In order for us to remember when we're out there and I was getting ready to smoke that joint, eh, mom's got a race jack at home. Put that sucker out. You know what I mean? Do you understand where I'm going with this church? That's the cut. That's a very good. That's, that's a fear you must say. If you don't have that fear, there's a problem. Amen. Who? Thank you, Lord. Paul says to work toward complete holiness because we fear God. 2 Corinthians 7.1 Beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. Exactly what I've been telling you. And spirit. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. In fact, Romans 3 Chapter, uh, Romans 3, chapter on sin. Romans 3 talks, that's all it's about, is sin. Romans 3, 3, uh, 3, 18. There is no fear for, there is no fear of God before their eyes. It says, it says that, uh, our chief sin is that we have no fear of God at all. The worst sin you can have is not fearing what God can do for you or, get, or let happen against you. Does that make sense? I know. I'd let, so, pull it out. It's, uh, and that's so true. That we have to make sure that we're in the presence of God. Because if we're in, in our flesh and we're in the world, what good are we? God created you for a purpose. He created you to be loved, to have a loving fear of him. When I fear God and when I don't fear God, I, I, I don't feel like I'm loving him or loving you. Because here we say that we love our children, but yet then we let them get high or we don't just... Cat, you know, we don't, we don't put our foot down. That's what's wrong with this world today. What's wrong with this world with the children and people today? The last couple generations, I know for me and Jeff's generation, you know, we, was, we feared that. But then a lot of our people, a lot of the folks that from our generation, well, I ain't going to do what my parents did to me. And then as it went on, they started giving them, taking away that fear. Because the parents, all they didn't want to do now is shut their mouth. Well, I don't want to hear them. Here, give, give. If God gave you everything you want, would you even seek God? No. God would be the genie in the bottle. You come to him when you want something. That's not what it's about. He did that the whole time you was in your flesh. He was there and you didn't even know it. I bet you, if you started looking back in your past before you had God, how many times God was there? And you didn't even deserve it. You didn't even know it. Amen? So it is clear from these passages. Sorry. This makes it hard and I lose track. It is clear from these passages that fearing God is a good and positive thing. Amen? Because it saves us from caving into our sinful ways. Does that make sense? So you're getting what I'm talking about now? So there's a difference in fearing fear of getting caught on fire or getting in a wreck 
Or, and what's awesome is if you, in God's fear, you don't have to worry about that anyways. Because if something, if I'm walking for the Lord, the best that he says, love me with all your heart, Marty. Not Critter's heart. Not Pam's heart, but your heart. So if you're loving God with all your heart and you're, you're, study, you're doing everything you possibly can to be in his presence and something, you get in a car wreck, well, you know that, okay, there's a reason. You know, the devil's trying to, there's a reason. But I'm going to give God glory. I'm not going to jump out of this car and start cussing somebody out because then I lose. I remember the first accident I got in after I was saved on my motorcycle. Kid pulled out from me. I looked in his eyes. He knew not to turn and he did. He had a just little daughter in the back seat. I hit the car, drove my tire through the car door, missed his daughter by that far, two years old. When I come up off that, I flew 70, 60, 70 feet through the air. And, and when I come up and I look, my motorcycle's totaled. I wasn't a happy camper. And then when I see that little baby that I could have killed her, I'm even, how ignorant could this guy be? And I wanted to go off. And then God stepped in. That fear of God come out of me. Wait a minute, dude. What if, matter of fact, you lived. You got a broken wrist. That baby's still alive. See, I had to start looking at the glory of God. I had to get in the presence of the Lord. That's why it's important to praise God. That's why I always say, yay, God's. Because if we're staying in the presence of God, then that fear becomes God-fearing. Does that make sense? It becomes a God-fear instead of a fear. Well, I fear that I tore up my motorcycle. Now I can't fix it. Well, that's a fleshly fear, and it's not important. Because if God wants me to have that motorcycle, he'll fix it, and he did. Matter of fact, he paid it off. Two weeks before that, I said, Lord, I want to pay this motorcycle off so I don't have to worry about this bill. Well, he paid it off. I still have that motorcycle sitting in my garage, rebuilt, custom the way I wanted it. Because of a wreck. Because I stayed in the presence of God. Now if I'd have went off and beat my old self, I'd have beat that guy to death. And my club would have showed up and it would have been really bad. And we'd have tormented that guy forever and ever and ever. Because I was in the presence of God, I was able to show him God. And when he looked at me like, dude, I'm so sorry. I said, it's all right, brother. Your baby's alive. I'm alive. You're alive. And God loves you. I was able to be in God's presence and serve God, which is what I was called to do. And by doing that, I get blessed. See, so having that fear of God and staying in God's presence, come to church on Sunday so you can be your brother and sister's keeper is important. Having that God fear is important because if you don't have the fear of God, well, I'll just do whatever I want. When I need God, I'll just do this. Let me tell you what, if you're doing this, you're not in the presence of God, and in the end, you're probably going to be one of those people who comes before God and he says, I never knew you of iniquity. I fear one thing in my life. I, want, I don't want to walk up and hear God say, I never knew you of iniquity. I want to hear God say, welcome home, good and faithful servant. When I went to my knees, I went to my knees. The most important thing that led me to my knees was I fear going to hell. Amen? So when I was growing up, to hear somebody say, that's a God-fearing man right there. I remember I was in the hills when I, uh, my grandma, we got to go to her church. And there wasn't a lot of God in my life, but, but I knew what a God-fearing man meant. I knew it meant that that's somebody you can trust. These people, when I'd hear them say, well, brother, brother uh, uh, Jeff back there, that's a God-fearing man. That meant, well, you can trust him. He's a man of God. He fears God. He's in God's presence. When a man or woman fears God, that means they're trying their best to walk in God's presence. That's their love to God. You're showing God your love. He says, love me with all your heart. That's how you do that. By fearing that you're not in God's presence. You're not shining for God. That's, the, that's a great fear to have. And if you don't have that, there's a problem. There's a problem in your life. If you knew this person was God-fearing, the way you could tell, because they had kindness and love and patience. Yesterday, I took my grandson to Columbus to buy a pickup truck, and the guy was supposed to meet me at noon. Well, he had forgot about me, went to an auction in Portsmouth, Ohio. So when I called him, I'm here, oh, he said, well, uh, it's almost over. I'll be there by 1. So we, at 1 o'clock, we were waiting on Sunbury Road. 
I'm caught up in traffic. I'm, I'm on my way. Two o'clock come. My grandson's like, Grandpa, let's just forget about it. I said, no, God's telling me that this is the truck for you. I got to wait. This is the truck that you're supposed to have. And so, so three o'clock comes, no man. Finally, he calls, he said, I, I made it to Polaris, but the traffic's back to four o'clock. He shows up. Uh, he, he, he's from, uh, I think it was uh, Hades or something like that. And, and you know, and uh, <clears throat> he says, Pastor, because I talked to him on the phone, and he said, you are a very patient man. He said, I, I don't understand. I said, well, I'm here because God told me that your truck is the one for my grandson. So I knew, even though in my, inside I wanted to get mad and angry, but I knew I was in God's presence, and I knew that this was the truck. And the funny thing is, when it was all said and done, I was able to witness to him, and he witnessed to me, and my grandson witnessed all this. He's seen that. Like, Grandpa, man, I see you get angry, but, man, I didn't realize that you have this patient when you know that God wants you to do this. We leave, and I, I went, went test driving the truck. I noticed the truck wasn't very fast. My grandson's had a problem with speed, and he has a problem with getting a bunch of kids in his car, and that's how he bloated up the last one, and, and he got himself in a bunch of trouble because he could haul his buddy around. And then I started realizing, well, he ain't going very fast in this truck, and he can't but get to in the front. And I was like, praise God. And when I took a picture of him last night, I got a picture in my office when I was 16 years old. My first truck was a beat up mess, but I, I had my own business doing the, uh, I was uh, delivering appliances for my stepfather. And I, so I, I took a picture, I looked at it, it reminded me of me, you know. And so it was cool because I knew in my heart that it was worth the wait. And my point to this is, I had a fear somewhere inside me that said, wait, just wait. This is the one. Don't go anywhere. And I just didn't have no fear. I, I did, so I didn't get angry because I just felt deeply in my heart this was God. Amen? So that's a good fear. Proverbs says, fear God. Fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. If we're fearing God, then we're doing what? Seeking God. Amen? We fear that we're not serving and doing God's will, and we need to know more. We need to know what God wants us to do. How can you know what God wants unless you have the Holy Spirit and this book? This is what guides and directs us, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Amen? So we have to have that fear. They are more likely to keep their word and treat... Oh, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. Uh says fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, is to depart from evil. That means we must involve, avoid evil or anything that it surrounds evil. What I'm, what I'm meaning there is, so Proverbs is telling us that if we fear God and we stay in the presence of God, then we're not going to be in the evil. Once we don't fear God, what happens? Then we, if we don't feel God, like last night, my boys was at the bowling. Come on, Dad, stay go bowling. You know, heck, you could even have a beard. Nobody will care. You know, I'm like, what would happen if Pastor Critter had a beard? And somebody that is seeking God, that only knows the old life, and and, and they they've always been told, well, if you drink a beer, you're a hypocrite. What would that do to my witnessing, though? Even though that's not true, what would that do to my witnessing? What's more important to me? My witnessing for God, my fear of being in God's presence, or my flesh? I fear God a lot more than I fear going and having a beer and hanging out and being cool. And somebody saying, oh, you're not cool. Does, does that make sense? Okay, so Proverbs 8. 11, 17, for wisdom is better than rubies, and all things one man's desire cannot be compared with her. 12, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out, finds, and finds out knowledge and discretion, knowing something's wrong. When I'm in God's presence, I know when things are wrong. Amen? 13, 
the fear of God of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride, ignorance, and the evil ways and perverse mouth. I hate. God's telling you, if you want to be in his presence, if you don't have if you have the fear of God, when you hear does any of these now said, you know, the cussing used to be a norm, right? For me, I know. But now when I hear somebody, do you, do you get that? Especially if you're in the presence of a woman or a kid or somebody that's not saved. The worst person for me to hear cuss is a Christian. Why? Because you're witnessing. Guys, you have been saved from hell because of God's love. And your fear led you to God, that loving fear, that God fear. And when you turn and witness to somebody in a fleshly way, you're turning them away from God. When your children, when you're doing sinful things in front of you, arguing in front of them and, and, and cussing in front of them or smoking in front of them or drinking in front of them, what are you teaching them to be of the flesh? If you don't have that fear that you don't want to do these things, no, I used to do it in front of my kids, smoked in the car, smoked in the house. But now I have that fear, well, I gave it all up because I didn't even want them to see that in my life. I didn't quit smoking because I didn't like it. I didn't quit getting high because I didn't like it. I quit doing it because it gave my father a bad name. When, I, when the Lord told me he wanted me to quit smoking weed, I was going to church for six months. I said, well, I ain't hurting nobody. I, I only buy an eighth a month. That's only 20 bucks. And he says, because I want you to be a witness. I had no idea I'd be up here 17, 18 years later preaching the gospel. But because I was fearing God, because I wanted to please God, look at me now. It takes that fear, guys, to stay in God's presence for you to grow. And people are like, man, I don't feel like I'm growing. It's probably because you're not in this word. It's probably because you don't have that fear. If you're truly saved, you're going to have that fear that I've got to get myself straight. Now, the biggest thing is with that fear is being obedient. Because fear can be a liar. That fleshy fear will come in and, oh, man, yeah, but your friends ain't going to like you if, you if you talk about Jesus in front of them. That's a lie. I thought that, but when I said, you know what? I don't serve them. I serve God. Then I was able to go back to the bars I was ba and, and as a Christian and shine for Jesus. I was in, when I broke my leg back in uh, uh, November, I got to witness for four days like I had probably never witnessed in my life to people that was truly down on luck and, and away from God. And I was in the pits where Jesus went and was able to be a light because I didn't fear, because God led me there, because I was in God's will. God told me, you can go there. I want you to go there. And then he showed me that he wanted me to be there. And I was able to witness. And I had people calling me, Critter, you all right? Because I got a motorcycle crash. Satan didn't like what happened, so he come after me. <laughs> but I didn't fear. If I have to walk around with this leg hurting the rest of my life, the witnessing that happened that week was worth my life. Because my life is God's. And when I leave this world, I know where I'm going. Amen? I don't fear going to hell. Why? Because I'm in the fear of God. I'm in the presence of the Lord. Are you getting what I'm talking about? The fear? That's a good fear. You're supposed to be a God-fearing man and woman. When somebody looks at you and says, you're a God-fearing man. God-fearing woman. Yea, God. Because that means they see God in you. Amen? I want to read uh, uh, Proverbs uh, eight fifteen, and rules, decrees, justice by me, uh, by by me, princesses rule and noble all the judges of the earth. I love those who what love me. So what does it mean to fear God? To me, to fear God is fearing that I may sin and disrespect God's will. When I, all I want to do is be pleasing to God. And when I'm not, when I do something in front of one of you, or if I do something that's not God, or if I tell you something and I'm wrong, that's what I fear when you come to me 
and I'm not able to, to uh, give you the right answer. That I always, that's why a lot of times you hear me say, let me pray about it. That way I know I'm in the presence of God and I'm going to do what's right. You know, uh, it's funny, you know, this whole past six months, you all know the trials I've been going through. And the other day I was with somebody and they said, you know, a pastor, they was having problems. I said, why didn't you let me know? I said, well, you got problems. We didn't, I didn't want to bother you. Oh, that right then told me, Chris, you got to quit crying about your problems. Folks, let me tell you, Chris is going to have problems till the day he dies. Why? Because I live in a hell world. It's a flesh. But I can be in the godly realm of, of this world through Christ who strengthens me. So I'm always here. And you are always going to have the devil coming after you. But fear not, for I am the Lord. That's scripture. That's a good fear. So we got to stay in the presence of God. But know that I'm here for you. No matter what, I'm here. And if with God, we'll get it through. Amen? Amen? Choices is what makes us men and women of God. When I accepted God into my life, it was by choice. I feared God. I feared hell. And by surrendering and dying to myself, God chose me. And the Holy Spirit entered me. And I become a God-fearing man. Because from, the point, from that point on, I wanted to do nothing but please God. I wanted to love my neighbor, which is something I never knew in my life. Amen? I'm going to cut this a little short. God showed me through fear how to please him by doing his will and believing the fear of the Lord is a gift. Do you know that's a gift? Having that fear from for God. And it comes through the Holy Ghost. Joshua uh, 24, 14. Fear of the Lord. Serve him with all faithfulness. Serve him with all faithfulness. Don't ever lose respect for God. Don't ever lose sight of God and his love for you. Open your hearts to his love by asking Christ to come into you. If you don't know Jesus this morning and you truly haven't surrendered, you say you believe, you know the devil believes. And you know that, that uh, the, the Bible said that the demons quiver over his name. So we know that evil believes. We know the world believes. He, even though the, all the atheists ever met, when it gets down low, they, they seek God. But to fear God and to be in God's presence is a totally different thing. If you don't know Christ today, let me ask you this. Would you rather go through life having your friends mad at you or, or, or laughing at you because you, you love God and that you're, you're praising God? And I'm like, man, I'd rather have people run me off because they don't want to hear me talk about God than I would me pleasing them and going to hell. Psalms 27.4 One thing I have, desire of the Lord, that I will seek, but I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Behold, the beauty of the Lord, and to acquire in his temple. That's my goal in life. Because if I'm in the presence of God, I'm going to be a happy man. And I'm going to praise him till the day I die. I'm not going to fear what Satan may do in my life. Take away my home. He can take everything I got. And I guarantee you, can, anybody knows my past, even as a Christian, 10 years ago, I lost everything. But I never lost sight of God. And God gave it back to me 100 times fold.
We have to know that God's power is stronger than anything. We have to know that God's will will be done, whether you help him or not. If you, like I was telling somebody this morning, if you're in the darkness, God don't see you. Because he only sees the light. He is the Alpha, the Omega. He is the beginning and He is the end. He is God and He created us. And He has proven to us over and over and over His love. But remember, God has a plan and His will will be done. When God created us, He gave us free will. But there was no fear until we decided to be in the flesh. Look at Adam and Eve. That's where fear began. God told us, if you stay in my presence, I got your back. But yet they went into their flesh. And what happened? Then they feared. The first thing they feared was what? They was naked. But little did they know that in the future, as we read through the Old Testament, that that fear would be a good fear. But they didn't have that fear. They wouldn't seek God no more. Once they figured out that God was, that was good, then everything was fine. We talked about this last week. But I'm going to leave you with this, guys. God loves you, and he created you for a purpose. I don't care what you look like. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care where you're at right now. In your, I don't care if you're at the lowest point in your life. God loves you, and he created you for a purpose. He created you before you went in your mother's when he gave you a ministry. And if you don't have that fear this morning, like I said before, if you go through life serving God and, and not having fear that God's not there, knowing that God is in your presence and he's guiding and directing, you're not alone ever, and you get to the end, what have you lost? If there's no God, what have you lost? But if you continue, and you're, and you're saying right now, well, Pastor, I really don't have that fear. That, that, well, I don't care what people think. You should. I know growing up, my mom used to, it don't matter what other people think. Well, there, and that's a whole different thing, too, in fear. There, there's, 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 I do care what people see in me and God. Now, if you don't understand why I do what I do, then that's on you. But I do care that you see God. Most important thing. But if you continue down your path without God or, or saying you have God, and, and, but yet you just continue to, to not fear God and walk on your own path and expect God to help you, expect to go to heaven, you're going to hell. You must be in the presence of God. And the only way to do that is by living by his word, fearing him and his love that he has for you. Did, it, did anything I say make sense? Guys, if you don't have that fear that you're not serving God right, there's a problem. And if you have that fear, then that means you need to do what? You need to get your butt in church. You need to get your butt in the Word. And you need to get your butt on your knees. Or your, get on your knees. And you need to be speaking to God. You need to be having that daily relationship, as I always say. Daily relationship. The Bible says go to the cross daily. Pick the cross up. Go to the cross means go to God. And then pick it up and walk with Jesus. Meaning sacrifice your life for others. So we can be their friend. Amen. I love you. I hope I made sense. God loves you. And I want you to know, it's not easy for me to prepare a message. And it's, not, it's even harder for me to sit here and try to read from it. Than to, I'm, used to, I'm an evangelist. I'm used to letting the Holy Spirit just tell me what to do. But when I do this, it's because that's what the Lord tells me to do. So I put, when I come up here, I'm terrified. I, I'm fear. But the fear I have is myself. But once I come to that altar, as you always see me do before I get up here, I turn it over to God, and my fear leaves. Amen? Can't make no mistakes if I'm in the presence of the Lord, only when I go back into my flesh. Stay in the presence of the Lord. Let God be your guide. Let him be your light. Shine for somebody. And remember what I said. If you see a brother and sister that's not here today, be a friend. Call them. We need to start doing that, church. We need to be out seeking the folks that are not here. Because you're supposed to be their body part. So if my arm was missing 
and I know it's laying over there. Well, they got a possibility of showing it back on. I'm going to pick that arm up, ain't I? Get it in a cooler, run it to the hospital, show this thing back on. Amen? Well, that's, somebody's missing here today. You should be finding out why. It could be a good reason, but there could be an excuse. And when you pray and God says, go see them, and you go to them, he'll give you a scripture to read to them when they give you that excuse. Amen? That's why it's important to be in this word. So we know what to do. We know what to say. You can't go wrong with the word of God. Amen? Fear not, because God is your Savior, and he's got your back, and he loves you. Amen? All right. So if you don't know Jesus today or you feel like you're just not where you need to be with God, come up to the altar. If you know somebody that needs prayer, uh, you know my family needs prayer with my dad. and We've got a lot going on in my family too. Uh, also, the young boys, I don't know if anybody heard about the young boys, at the, the shooting up there at uh, Kroger's. Well, I knew them kids and, and they got lost. They come from good families and they got lost. And, and, and some bad things went down. So pray for those families also. They're going through a lot right now. So if you, if you know somebody needs prayer, come up here. That's being a friend. I invite everybody in this church to come up here and pray for those who are not here that are, that because they lost their fear or something. Amen? That's what, we, that's what the body does. So come up here this morning and pray for somebody. If you need prayer, I'm here for you. If you don't know the Lord, come and see me after the service. And I'll show you exactly how easy it is to have the Lord in your life. To how to learn how to have that fear. Amen? Okay, let's